Good morning, everyone. My name is Sewa, a pastor at Centennial United Methodist Church. I'm so glad you joined us in our worship service this Sunday. Do you know Jesus' prayer is one of many prayers of Jesus? Today, we would like to explore another Jesus' prayer in the Gospel of John and learn why Jesus prayed out loud this prayer for His disciples. This morning, we would love for you to do two things for us. First, connect with our church family through the chat box and please share us your name and where you are watching from. Second, share your joy and concern and we will love to pray for you throughout this week. Today, God invites us to enter God's loving presence. Please join me in our time of worship. Please join me in the call to worship, which is written by Nancy C. Townley. Jesus promised to be with us always. Lord, we are thankful for that promise. In all times, this promise gives us hope. Lord, we rejoice in the hope you give us. Come and celebrate the eternal promises of Christ. Lord, we are so grateful that you have given to us so much and that you promised God's presence with us always. Amen. Amen. This morning's opening prayer by Nancy C. Townley. Gracious Lord, this morning we come to you with so many things on our hearts. Keep our hearts and our minds open to your words of healing and of hope. Give us spirits of courage for all the times ahead. We ask your blessing on all those this day who are afflicted with illness and debilitating diseases. For those who mourn, for those who feel lost and alienated from family and from friends. Be with these dear people. Help them to feel your comforting and restoring presence. Give to us also, Lord, a spirit of peace and joy that we might live your love through our attitudes and actions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning and welcome to Centenary to the, on this Ascension Sunday. Our opening hymn this morning is, We Are the Church. Will you help me sing? Say 
Good morning. Good morning. So friends, today I'd like to speak with you about the importance of prayer and having a community, staying connected with each other. We know that Jesus always taught by example. And before he left this earth, he prayed for his disciples and he was preparing them. And he knew that we would have challenges in this lifetime. He knew that even though we're not of this world as Christians, that we're still in the world and we need to stay together and pray for each other. Yes? Yes. So it's good to pray. And I know we were speaking recently about the importance of prayer and how parents pray for us and encourage you to think about also praying for your parents as children, praying for wisdom and guidance, and also praying for your friends. So I encourage you to think about the friends that you have in your life, and think about those who are in Sunday school, whether you're seeing them every Sunday or not. We're still coming together online, some in person, and I want you to take a moment and think if God places a certain person on your heart and say a prayer for them during the week and maybe even let them know. All right, can you think about doing that this week? I'll give you a little homework to do. <laughs> and you never know who might be praying for you. And it's important to encourage each other and know that even in these times when it is very lonely, it can be lonely that we still have each other and we can still be connected. Amen? Amen? All right, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for giving us the gift of each other. Thank you for being with us and realizing that we're not alone. We have you and we have others in our lives. Help us to remember to pray for each other in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before listening to today's scripture reading, I would like to give you an introduction. John 17 has been called Jesus' burial prayer. On the night before he was arrested, Jesus prayed to God on behalf of his faith community. In other words, he prayed not only for his disciples, but also for us. In this prayer, he asked for God's loving care, guidance, and protection as his disciples sent to the world to witness God's love as a community of faith. So this time, I would like to invite you to use your holy imagination while you're listening to this passage. Imagine that you were one of Jesus' disciples who overheard Jesus praying for them. Let's, let's listen to today's passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you've sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. 
And now I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to pr protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. This is the word of God for the people. Thank you, John. So the prayer that you listened to this morning was one of the many prayers that Jesus lifted to God. Jesus liked to pray alone, but sometimes he prayed for the benefit of those who overheard his prayer. Especially in the Gospel of John, we found some great examples. For example, in chapter 6, before Jesus fed 5,000 people, he prayed out loud to God to help people witness God's miracle. In chapter 11, Jesus prayed out loud so people could witness the raising of Nazareth. And here in chapter 17, we found Jesus praying out loud for his disciples. Today, I'd like to unpack why Jesus prayed out loud his farewell prayer through John chapter 17 and what this Jesus prayer means to us for today. I assume many of you, and many of you know the Lord's Prayer right? In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us how to pray. And in this Jesus Pharaoh prayer, John read for us this morning, Je Jesus prayed out loud for his disciples to prepare them for the future and assuring them of God's guidance in Jesus' absence. Have you ever heard someone praying for you? You may remember overhearing your parents bedtime prayer as a child, or you may remember to hear your pastor or your friend pray out loud for you. Being prayed for can be an interesting experience. You never know what this person might say about you on your behalf. You are not in control so that it can feel vulnerable. But being prayed for can be a deeply moving experience. For example, while you are listening to someone's prayer, you may catch a glimpse of what someone's relationship with God is like. You may experience how the Spirit of God leads the person's lips and pray for you when you do not even know what to pray or do not have words yet to do for yourself. You may learn how much the person cares for you and loves you. And through this prayer experience, you may feel that God invites you to a holy and intimate relationship with God and with the person who prayed for you. My parents live in South Korea, and before a global pandemic, they tried to visit me once a year. Whenever I had their visitation, the most challenging moment was time to say goodbye at the airport. One time, my parents and I arrived at the airport early, about four hours before the flight, to have a last meal together. After we finished our meal, we are about to leave. Suddenly, my parents told me that they wanted to pray for me. Honestly, I did not remember what they prayed for me on that day because we are pretty emotional. Still, while I was listening to their prayer, I remember I felt my parents' concern for leaving their daughter alone 
and felt their genuine love and care. I think Jesus prayed for his disciples for the same reason. While Jesus prepared to depart from the world, he prayed for his disciples and their future. He knew the hardship they would face when Jesus was gone. So Jesus prayed to God for his disciples and said, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I'm coming to you, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. Here, Jesus prayed for God's care of the disciples. And the Greek word, kereo, is translated as protect or keep in the English Bibles. But this word has multiple meanings. It means attend to carefully, to guard, and take care of. Here, Jesus is asking God for God's guardianship and love and care for his disciples. Second, he prayed out loud because he wanted to teach his disciples, especially about unity. Jesus continued to pray for his disciples and said, Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Jesus wanted his disciples to be united like he was to God, so their love will be present in the life and mission of the faith community. Through this prayer, Jesus is also reminding of his disciples that they will not be alone. They have each other and God as they continue to overcome hardship and move toward their journey. Throughout betrayal, trial, loss, grief, healing, unexpected joy, and hope. I think this Jesus prayer reminds us of two essential things. First, as Jesus prayed for his disciples, we can also pray for other people. God calls every believer to this prayer ministry. Prayer is an unspeakably precious gift to every believer, and God wants us to cultivate this gift of prayer. When I had a clinical pastoral education experience, in an overlook hospital in Summit, I served as a chaplain. I had a wonderful opportunity to meet with diverse people who are get, getting through difficult times in their life. You may never know how much courage is required to knock on the door of someone you do not know and offer your prayer. I knew it and I know it was very hard. But what surprised me was though, whenever I offer my prayer to the patients, except in a very few cases, many of them and their families love to hear my prayers. Sometimes I pray with people who have different religions or even with atheists. But I can tell you that that was one of the most sacred moments that I ever had in my life because I experienced God's overwhelming grace. No matter who I pray with, God was there for us. When I offer my prayer and ask people, how can I pray for you? This question allows people to share their story and sense an unexpected divine presence and love while sorrow and pain still exist in their lives. Today we are living through a turbulent time. I'm sure we all deal with trauma or life crisis or both since last year, March. I believe that God continued to call us and challenge you and me to use our gifts of prayer for others. Not because we believe God will answer every single prayer that we lift up to God, but because we believe that the prayer allow us to experience divine presence and love in our midst. Think of someone who is facing or getting through a difficult time. Call or meet with the person, listen to their stories, and if God gives you courage, offer them your prayer. If you can, pray out loud for the person so the person can hear your prayer. Maybe that experience 
change not only the person's life, but also your life too. Second, Jesus' pray, prayer reminds us of who we are as a community of faith, and we are called to be united. The pandemic has destroyed our friendship and relationship. Some people might say, though, their relationship has strengthened during this time, but it has been painful for some people because the pandemic has divided families and communities. I do not know about you, but I think I miss the place, people, and a community. We are looking for connections. Today, Jesus' prayer reminds us of our calling as a church. We are called to be united in Christ and be a community to witness God's love to the world. As a church, we are sent to the world to be a feet and hands of Christ. I would like to share one story before I closing my sermon. During the war, when church was totally destroyed, but a statue of Christ which stood by the altar was almost unharmed except its hands. The hands of Jesus' statue was missing. When the church was rebuilt, one of the sculptors who lived in the town offered to make new hands of Jesus. After considering the matter, the church members decided to let it stand as it was without hands. And the church decided to put a sign at the bottom of statue that read, Christ has no hands but yours. And they said, during this war, if we don't feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, entertain the stranger, visit the imprisoned, and clothe the naked, who will? I do not know if this is true or true story or not, but I agree with the beautiful church. The beautiful people in this church. During this pandemic, if we centenary don't feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, visit the imprisoned, and clothe the naked, who will? This Sunday is Ascension Sunday, and we remember that Jesus ascended to heaven where we took his rightful throne as Lord of the whole earth. But today, we are also reminded that although Jesus not bodily with presence with us, he prays for us, continue to love us, and call us to be one and to live as his hands in this world to love one another and our neighbors. May we continue to pray for one another. May we live up to the calling to a community in the world to love one another. May it be so. Amen.
Let us pray. Bless this gift to be nourishment for the world, hungry for your grace. Bless us to be nurturers of love for a world hungry for your compassion. Bless us to be one in ministry with you and with one another through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, go into the world, clothed with power from on high, carrying Christ's message of forgiveness, love, and joy. The power of the Holy Spirit, we go with you as you bear witness to this good news. Amen. <laughs>